Coming up on this week's Book Guys show, we talk about comic books, coffee, podcasts, and we can get a little bit of book news in there, so stick around. Book Guys, books, audio books, audio dramas. Book Guys Show is brought to you by Audible. Go to bookguys.ca slash audible and get a free book just for signing up for a few trials. This is the Book Guys Show, episode 87. I'm Paul Alves. I'm Professor Allen. And I'm Sir Jimmy. We're back for another week of books, audiobooks, audio dramas, podcasts, and all that stuff. We're going to start off by talking about what we're reading, because I know we've all been reading a crap load of books through over the summer. I should have practiced that. I said crap load. <laughs> over our summer holiday, we're reading a lot of stuff. Professor Allen, you got some comic books and books I'm sure you've been reading. I got a, I, I got a couple things here for you, and I'll uh, display them for the uh, YouTube audience, which will guarantee we get taken down for copyright infringement. But this is a terrific... Oh, uh, comic books, comic books, comic books. Now, Iron, Man, Iron Man versus Doctor Doom. Nice. And uh, Doctor Doom spends most of his time messing with the Fantastic Four, but uh, he actually makes for a pretty good foil to uh, Iron Man as well. And there have been a, a handful of Iron Man, Doctor Doom tussles over about 25 years, and this sort of is a sequel to all of those. And, and Wraps that up. Iron Man, Doctor Doom, Merlin, Camelot, King Arthur. What more do you want? Well, I, I can see that, that happening, right? friends, because they're both like really good tacticians and they're into technology. I, I can see it happening. They sort of got robotic suits and, you know, you got science. Doctor Doom's got a little mystical thing that Iron Man doesn't like. Uh, they both have quite big egos. On the, on the novel side, though, not straying too far from, uh, from comic books. I knocked out uh, a book I mentioned last episode of the episode before, The She-Hulk Diaries. Oh, yes. <laughs> by Marta Acosta. It's Very a Marvel nice. prose novel. Look, no pictures. Wow. It's just all of those um, <laughs> word things. But it's very fun. It's a, uh, it's a you know, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be for the ladies. It's a chick lit. With a you know six hundred pound, brain uh, any 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 little, little romance fighter. in there, a little romance, a little just a little bit of love, a little bit of romance. Hello, <laughs> nice. We got to get Pat Flewelling back on to chat with you about that one for sure. Exactly. Try. Uh, we'll do a we'll we'll do a <laughs> joint in depth review with Pat. Absolutely, and you know what? I have to be honest, folks. This is Pat's book. Fog of Dogside City. I started it a while ago, and I've had so little time for paper books that I had to put my uh, bookmark back at the front. I'm going to start it again soon. Audible is so convenient. Sorry. I'm sorry, Pat. I am getting to it very soon before you come here, I swear. We are making room, Pat. Look, we're expanding. We're going to get another chair or two or four. Soon we'll have uh, guests in studio in Toronto. Now we got to get authors to come to Toronto. We have liquor. Yeah. You're going to need like a remote control light up above that you can control with a little joystick and like put it right on somebody. Like, hey, you got so and so. <laughs> like like the, well, thrill, the thrill cam from Twit. I got to get a, a run a wire and have a little <laughs> camera on it. What do you have, Jimmy? I picked up a book. You can see the little black mark on it here. Oh. Right down the middle. They take a magic marker at the local bookstore and they have a shelf where everything's free. Like freehollowbooks.com was started. But they Going actually, hang books on. Off the shelf. They actually if I defaced to, the book first? That's mean. I know. Well, they do That's, that so you won't try to bring it back through the line and get credit for it and waste their time. 
Right. I guess. But if you take a uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and wet it a little bit, if you got a slick cover, you can take that right off. So I've been doing that for a long time. Pro tip. Well, this book's called Shooting Straight. It's old. I mean, it's written by Wayne LaPierre, um, the guy who's head of the NRA, with an introduction by my cool dead hands, Charlton Heston. <laughs> And uh, it's about how the anti-gun lobby's piggybacking on the war on terror and trying to take down the Second Amendment. So it's from a gun lover's perspective. So uh, it's perfect for me. There you go. Are you going to hollow it out after? <laughs> no, nah, it's so thin it would be pointless <laughs> and I, besides. And I think, I think that's going to be the first place they look for the gun is in the <laughs> Second Amendment enough, book. It's, it's, it's signed by Wayne LaPierre. Mm -hmm. And oh, nice. And Charlton Heston. James Baker. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two words, Charles Jimmy. Heston. Two words, Jimmy. eBay. I know that's just one word, but still, eBay <laughs> with the signed copy. I'm... I almost wore my eBay shirt. I, I've got a technology tip for folks today, because I had a bunch of uh, things on my Audible, which I use on my phone. But you know, apparently, I have my Audible app on the little card that goes in the phone. And I use it to record the show as well. But I have to buy a new card because I, I just loaded up my Audible app and it says it's not installed. It's over there in the camera, right there where you are, folks. Uh, but I do remember that, the, that card. The one I'm listening to now is called X Heroes by Peter Kleins. He's the guy who did Apartment 14, which I talked about, uh, I don't know, 10 shows ago. Awesome. Picture this. I haven't, I haven't finished yet, so I won't give a full review, but Superheroes versus zombies in Hollywood. Awesome! You got, like, humans and superheroes on the wall, like, shooting zombies, and they have, like, a little meta game going where the, the person uh, who can kill the most famous celebrity zombie, you know, gets all the, all the props. <laughs> so, you know, they're shooting, like, Angelina Jolie and Jessica Alba and stuff. <laughs> but uh, lots of fun. Uh... I just saw that he came out with his third in this uh, series, and I hate doing stuff out of order. I don't know if you guys can do that, but I saw the third one. It looked so interesting. I said, ah, it's the third in the trilogy. I got to listen to all three or none. Absol there I am. Absolutely. I can't, I can't start a series in the middle, and the problem is once I start a series, I have trouble stopping. I certainly can't stop a book in the middle. Yeah. That's well, you, impossible. You yeah. shut down with Ender's Game. Are you still going? That's, that's, well, look, Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow sort of tells the complete story. I'm, I'm, they're on my list. There is an expanded, expanded universe. <laughs> uh, speaking of Ender's Game, of course, they're in the middle of production uh, over at Skyboat Media on Ender's Game Live, which is going to be six to seven hours. We are told, a little birdie on Twitter told us that there's going to be over 30 voice actors. This is going to be basically a huge audio drama. I think quite possibly from the people that brought you the first multi-voice audiobook, I think they're bringing you the most voice audiobook ever. <laughs> and apparently Orson Scott Card is heavily involved. It's the de facto version of Ender's Game. I'm really looking forward to listening to this a lot more than I am the movie, believe it or not, because... I figure if Orson has strained his own work down to six hours with 30-odd voices, that's got to be better than like an hour and a half. Yeah, and you still get to imagine everything in your mind because some of the stuff I've seen of the movie, uh, I was like, oh, that's not really how I pictured it, you know, and so it get kind of disappointing, but, you know, the mind always wins. Now, of, of course, the, they've, they've changed the roles of, of the various actors. I mean, Gabrielle de Cure is not going to be Valentine anymore because her voice is a little older now. So they've actually brought in children to play the parts of the children. Uh, Stefan Rodnicki, uh, Scott Brick, Gabrielle DeCure are coming back, but as adult uh, roles. So they will be involved, but they won't be, uh, you know, Rodnicki won't be Ender, uh, you know, Scott Brick won't be Bean, and uh, Gabrielle won't be Valentine, but they're still in it. And uh, Orson Scott Card is there every day. So when day. Stefan Rudnitsky came to me and uh, said that there was a publisher interested in doing a dramatized version of Ender's Game, I immediately knew two things. First of all, this was going to happen. 
one way or another, I was going to make sure it happened. And two, I was going to write it myself. Ender's Game was going to be just as hard to adapt to audio drama as it was to uh, movies. In fact, harder. So the problem with doing something like this is it's, it's expensive. So you have to have a budget, you have to have funding, and if you have a budget and funding, then you have a schedule. I thought this was going to be easier than it turned out to be, so I glibly agreed. May 1st, not a problem, just a couple of months away, but it was, it was going to be easy. I know the story backward and forward. This isn't going to be hard. It's hard. Uh, you have to rethink things. I had to come up with new characters, had to come up with uh, uh, scenes that were not in the book in order to explain scenes that are in the book. The dialogue uh, it's a it good all. thing that, that Stefan is himself an artist and a friend, and between artist and friend, he was able to forgive incompetent, unprofessional writer, uh, which, is, which is very good. I, I really was grateful for that, because uh, what I turned in is, uh, I think, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think it's the best version of Ender's Game that's been created yet. Gabrielle is going to be on August 21st, going to be recording with us. So just after that, on Book Eyes Show. And we are going to have the entire cast, not all 30, but maybe like four or five of them, sometime in a little thing, a little secret we like to call Booktober. Just and saying. just to clarify... Paul did not just say a few minutes ago that Gabrielle de Cure is older than she was a few years ago. He did not mean that in the least. I didn't mean what it that meant, way. We're all aging at the same rate. I, I didn't mean, oh. There goes our Gabrielle de Cure interview. Uh, uh, Jimmy, which one of us three is not married? <laughs> That's the why, one, folks. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, folks. That's been the Book Guys Show. We're done. <laughs> Forever and ever. <coughs> uh, I am happily married. There you go. Mrs. Sir Jimmy even is her name. Perfect match. That's right. <laughs> that's right. It's on, it's on the, all the official forms. Uh, so that's what we've been reading. Any book news? What's going on? We're not doing the book news anymore. Uh, <laughs> Other than Apple, you know, Apple got in a lot of trouble. Apparently they were now. Now it looks looking like, which is good news, if you're still an Apple customer like I am. I still have my iPad, I still have my Mac. Good news for Apple customers is, because of all this malarkey, it's looking like Apple is going to be forced to allow people or companies like Amazon, owned by Google, uh, uh, allowing Amazon to sell their books on the iOS platform rather than you having to buy them somewhere else and then they get loaded to your phone. So it's looking like uh, online stores within iOS for third-party companies is going to be allowed, which is good. Uh, they did get in a little bit more trouble. Uh, at some point, there was a ruling that they couldn't sell iPads and iPhones in the United States anymore. But thankfully, the Obama administration kiboshed that whole court ruling because, uh, well, to thank them for, you know, since Steve Jobs died, for joining the NSA program. I'm just putting my theory out there. A little Did you see this thing? Uh, they opened up a camp in Florida for kids that is a Hunger Games camp. Oh, that's cool. Do they kill each where other? The kids actually, the kids fight to the death, <laughs> but not literally. <laughs> you know, and it comes Paint down ball? to one person. And so here's the thing, Jimmy. <laughs> if you had told me that story, and and asked me to guess which of our 50 states that takes place in, I would have guessed Florida first. I would have said really? the, I would have said Michigan. That sounds about right. I would have said Michigan because uh, Detroit's the city where they wanted to build a zombie apocalypse uh, theme uh, park. Same. <laughs> yeah, they said that killing sounded too uh, morbid, too violent, so they called it collecting lives. Uh, Gamification. Let's, let's do a little bit of this. Books on film and television. Has anyone watched Wolverine? No button and uh, Mrs. Sir Jimmy both watched it and they enjoyed it thoroughly. I, I uh, I've had enough shirtless Hugh Jackman to get me through the next decade. I thought it was a little too Japanese for me. That's kind of cool. It was a little bit seemed a little forced to do all this uh, stuff. I was hoping for a, a real, you know, two-hour-long origin story for Wolverine. I wanted to see like. 
as a Canadian, we have very few Canadian superheroes. I was hoping to see like the Weapon X program. Uh, I wanted to see like, you know, Captain America and Canada getting injected, and I wanted to see Wolverine having his bones removed out of his body and the mantium put in, and a little bit of Canada. Just a little, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not asking for a lot. Can he be in Canada for two minutes of the movie, seeing as he's Canadian? No. They make him American again, and he's in Japan for 99% of the movie, and it's just like, fail. Then they wonder, well, our numbers are down in Canada. Not many people in Canada watched it. Well, piss off. <laughs> well, this, but this, to be fair, the samurai yeah. story is one of the, the, the most popular, yeah. recent, not, not of the original, one of the more, more popular modern takes on sort of the personality, origin story of the personality and the character of Wolverine with that uh, sort of lone samurai vibe. Well, we're, we're looking at, uh, I hear rumors, and I haven't uh, looked into too much, but there may be an Alpha Flight movie in the future. But maybe they'll do the, finally do the World Wolverine you know, origin story then when they get, you know, Captain Canuck and Puck and all these other weird characters together could be fun at 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 that point I, th I think that is scheduled for 2073 there you go i think that's uh <laughs> that's that's uh the marvel movies version eight i think is it's all dependent on how uh, superman comes. versus batman does exactly exactly <laughs> and i want to yeah, clear so the yeah, they, they've actually got some people uh shortlisted for some of those roles have you seen uh no i haven't do you know who joseph gordon levitt is Yes. Yeah, they got him um, possibly set to uh, play Bruce Wayne. Wow. Okay. Um, the Bruce, uh, it's Zack Snyder's doing this, right? And they said that. Uh, I, I don't see that happening, but then again, I didn't see Michael Keaton anywhere possibly being a good Batman, and he's not the worst. He's not bad. And they also got Josh Brolin and Ryan Gosling. Okay. Now, Ryan's Deadpool. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Jimmy, that seems to me to be a list of actors for any role in Hollywood these days. Those three yes. actors are pretty I mean that that could have been any of about 42 movies you just mentioned. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now, you guys remember at the at Comic-Con when they announced Superman vs. Batman, all they had was the logo and uh they had who came out? It was um they played Loki. Whatever. He came out, and he Tom read... Tom Hiddleston for the Avengers panel. He, wrote, he read a little uh, excerpt from, uh, I believe it was Dark Knight Returns, where, where Bruce, uh, where Batman basically says, Clark, I want you to remember, the, the only guy who ever beat you is me, or something like that. And I want to remember, remind folks, if you actually read that comic book, that fight ends with Kal-El, with Superman, holding the lifeless body of Batman. So don't expect... I'm just saying, don't expect the bad guy to come out on top. That's all. Putting it out there. It is a Man of Steel sequel. He's got to win in the end. Just saying. <laughs> there was a great arc in, uh, in the early 90s, I want to say, early to mid-90s, where um, Batman ended up with a kryptonite ring that actually Superman gave, gives Batman a kryptonite ring on the theory that if I ever go crazy... If someone ever possesses me, yes. if you know Lex Luthor is able to control my mind and I go crazy, you're the only person I trust to take me out. There you go. So maybe that's where we're heading. Or at least I assume maybe he had that's the else, end of the movie. Someone else mailed the ring, I hope. <laughs> it was in a lead-lined uh, box, if you must know. Hey, guys, you know what? Uh, we're going to do a really short show today because we're still kind of on summer break. But as Professor Allen talked about before the show, what goes better with a comic book or a book than a nice cup of coffee? And, you know, we have props. There's props. You can buy, you can buy some decent coffee or okay coffee. This is about 10 bucks at Walmart. Tastes like poop. If you're a real coffee aficionado like I am, you want to check out tonks.org. Here's what Tonks does. Every two weeks, it's kind of subscription. So every two weeks, they send you a new bag of coffee. And it might not come out on screen, but I'll read it for you. Every two weeks, you get a surprise coffee 
uh, from anywhere around the world. And it's a gourmet blend. It's well roasted. They literally, they roast it on Sunday. And you get it like two or three days later in the mail. Freshly roasted. Full beans. This one is uh, Kenya. Kamwangi from Kirinyaga. Whole bean coffee. And a couple weeks ago, I got this one. Valente from Santa Ana, El Salvador. I like this one. I don't really like this I got one. The, that's what mine is. Mine is the El Salvador coffee. I love the El Salvador. You got, you got a bigger bag than I did. And well, I paid it's for mine. Actually, it's a vacuum sealed bag, <laughs> and it's got a little pinhole on the back to where you can, when you squeeze the air out of it, yeah. after you seal it, it takes all the air out. So. Yeah, it lets, it lets uh, the air out, but not carbon dioxide or something like that. I don't know how it works. It's magic. It's well, magic. the bad thing, I was I was prepared to make a cup for tonight, and I got out the coffee grinder, and I realized the coffee grinder I have has been used to run Bujalokia peppers oh, no. and cayenne peppers through, and it's... it's that would be a really yep. spicy coffee. No, that's not... Well, listen, no, Jimmy, I got no. you covered. Hang on. I said we had props. I like to make an eight-cup pot. It's the only thing I know how to make. So you fill your grinder up to the eight pot. And you don't want to grind them all at once. You're going to get a nice fresh taste by actually grinding it. Now, this might sound like the apocalypse, because I don't know how this is going to sound on the mic here to on the our, table. To our audio-only listeners, this is not a dental <laughs> drill. No, this is not a dental drill. Very bad neuroassociation for an ad read, but here we go. So what you want to do is you want to pulse it. You don't want to do it all at once, because then you're going to end up with like three or four whole beans. That's not good. You can let it settle. And for a regular coffee, you're not, you're not making an espresso, so you gotta let it grind, but you don't wanna grind it too much. You want it a little coarse, so that's about what you want. And oh man, that smells good. And I gotta say, as a coffee lover, I love it. Uh, yeah, it costs a little bit more than the Walmart coffee, but the cool thing about it is the discovery. It's that, so Jimmy, every two weeks, we look forward to opening that Tonks box. Me, me and the box. Me and Kevin. We open it. We're like, "Oh, cool! It's from Guatemala. Let's try it." Yeah. And you're not gonna like them all. Like I personally don't like the Kenya. Kevin loves it. I love the El Salvador. You know, but it's not a thing where you can order more of the El Salvador. They gr they they roast it fresh, deliver it, and that's it. There's no more of it. It's fresh. They they get it all out. And two weeks from now, yeah. we're gonna get another flavor. It's dated. Yeah. That's the date. And it comes with a little card tells you, you know, the Juan Valdez of that area and who he is. And they pay these people properly. It's not like, you know, big box stores go in and basically, you know, ruin the environment and, you know, rob these people, get them, you know, working less than minimum wage. So get a little like $30 grinder or $10 grinder. And I'm going to make a fresh pot right now. I'll be drinking that later in the show. You can even try it for free. You don't have to spend a dime. Go to tonks.org slash bookguys and they'll send you, well, they're not going to send you a big bag. They're going to send you a little sample bag, but check it out. And you, who knows what flavor you'll get. Depending on when you sign up at tonks.org slash bookguys, you, you'll, who knows? Discovery is great. And just to clarify, to clarify, tonks, T-O-N-X. Dot O-R-G. We'll put it up on the screen right here. <laughs> Good point, I, Alan. I, guys, you know what? I know it's a long ad read, but... I, I'm, I, I'm always here to care for our audio listeners as well. Thank you. And uh, I don't think we'll ever promote anything on this show that we don't really like. Like, I'm eating a coffee bean. Who doesn't love coffee anyway? <laughs> Be right back after the break with some coffee, folks. <laughs> I already asked Graf if I could go with you. I don't want you there. He said when the war's over. He said he'd bring me to you wherever you are. To weep a little over my grave? Or bring me cookies in my prison cell? You really are depressed. Because they're counting on me to win, and I don't know how. Books and coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, we're back. 
Oh, wait, no. we, uh, we re- I was just having some nice, delightful coffee. So was I. I was having some uh, fantastic coffee in this Superman cup, which I think was purchased at Ned Flanders' Leftorium, because I got a hold of my left hand, so you can see the shield. Mmm. <laughs> Fresh coffee. Let me tell you what. The spicy coffee made in the coffee grind with all the peppers in it, I think that's a new thing. I've actually seen people put gourmet coffee, and I don't know why, on steaks to season them. They wash it off after. I have no idea why. We're going to look that up for EBS, maybe do a food and drink thing. Putting coffee on steaks? Yeah. That is all over the... uh, All over the the food channel. They do that coffee, a little chocolate, grind up some coffee chocolate. Hmm. That's that's part of your rub for the steak. Just saying. Do you think this would be any good for coffee enemas? <laughs> Not with the peppers. Oh no, you know, yes. Sir Jimmy. Thank you. If we drank coffee during EBS, less people would pass out during the show. I think that's true. I think it's a good idea. We need more stimulation because I don't really get enough. You know, but this coffee's really working. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, Professor Allen, please tell me you got some podcasts to talk about, please. I do. I've got the... <laughs> All right. I'm going to hit the jingle then. <laughs> but only if you have a jingle. Podcast. <laughs> See, this is how I usually hold a coffee with my right hand because I'm right-handed. And look, why, why would you put... Why would you not put your logo on the other side as well? I'm just saying. You want to promote Superman. Discrimination against left-handers, clearly. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got uh, I've got two podcasts uh, to talk about here in the summer. You know, a lot of my TV shows are off. Some of the podcasts take a brief summer break, like maybe the Book Guys take a few weeks off. So it's a chance to grab a new podcast. And the one I found, I just started listening a few weeks ago, but I'm totally caught up. About twenty twenty five episodes is Earth Destruction Directive, Ooh. hosted by Luke Jacanetti, and Luke is a big fan of Daikaiju. And if you saw the movie Pacific Rim, you are Japanese monsters. So it's a podcast dedicated to stomping Tokyo into the dust multiple times. <laughs> so he, he covers a lot of Godzilla, Gamera, Mothra, Ultraman, and others. Mostly the movies, but also some TV shows and some comic books. Uh, IDW uh, publishes a very good current iteration of the Godzilla comic book. So that is Earth Destruction Directive. And then also one called uh, a new, uh, new podcast network called the Relatively Geeky Network. And I confess, in the interest of full disclosure, this is my <laughs> side project into comic book podcasting. Sounds interesting, Professor Allen. Tell us more about it. <laughs> well, Paul, since you asked, and since Sir Jimmy probably asked also, uh, it's uh, three shows in the feed. My solo show, The Quarter Bin Podcast, where I review my favorite type of comic books cheap comic books there's also uncovering the bronze age my daughter's solo show about comic books from the 1970s well before she was born and there's also the short box showcase our joint show where we talk with each other about various comic book topics and as of two days ago we are on itunes so search relatively geeky wow you're 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 like on already on one podcast and you don't you don't mess around we do three (laughs) awesome Hello. There's my co-host. <laughs> oh, you got to get her an extra mic so she can join us on Book Guys as well. Good plan. Very good. So, uh, do you have a clip uh, you want to show us? I feel like David Letterman because now I got the. I need a pencil. Hang on. That's a pencil. All right. Do you have a clip you want to show us, uh, Professor Allen? <laughs> I have a cl- I do. Sure, DC would like September 2011 to be the start of the new 52 era. Yeah, that's or, not going to happen. Or Marvel and the Marvel Now initiative and all those, but maybe this will be the reboot era. Maybe, maybe you know what we're in now with these new, new comics uh, starting up or being reimagined. I should say, you know, right? You know, Aquaman becoming Ugh. awesome. Ah, oh my gosh, Aquaman. Okay, again. If you're not buying Aquaman and you are listening to people talking about comics on a podcast, one, that means you're a nerd. Two, that means that you probably know where a comic book store is. If not, comiXology. Buy Aquaman. 
buy all of the Aquaman. It is amazing. So just in case people are still giving you crap, or if you or if you like Aquaman. Oh wait a minute, uh, Aquaman. See that that guy that talks to fish. <sighs> just buy like every copy of Aquaman number one that you can find and send it to everyone that you know who has ever insulted Aquaman. It will convert them in twenty-seven pages. So well, that's just me, a guys. little bit. I'm of drinking what you coffee. Can... Uh, you guys are on your own for the show now. Okay. Okay. Well, that's just a little bit of what you'll find on the relatively geeky feed. And I believe Sir Jimmy had another podcast he wanted to talk about as well. Not to interrupt your coffee, your your coffee drinking and book reading. Comic books and coffee. Mm-mm, good. It's all right. I really feel like I'm getting a lot done here. I've got the, this is my Jose Canseco signed baseball. 40-40. Hey the, the baseball's first 40-40, man. 40 home runs, 40 stolen bases. Probably the greatest baseball player of all time, except for that time that the ball hit him on the head and uh, got a home run for the <laughs> other guy. But um, it's a podcast that I just came across. I heard someone talking about it, and I was like, oh, my goodness, Jose Canseco has a podcast. So it's called Canseco Knows Best, and he just sits, and he's got a moderator <laughs> that throws questions at him from people that write in or call in, and, and uh, he just answers any question at all. And I tell you what, he's... He's very blunt, and he's he's not afraid to say anything, and, he, and he's a lot smarter guy than I think a lot of people would give him credit for. And uh, this last episode I was listening to, he's uh, he's done some professional wrestling, like MMA stuff, and it's like just... Uh, what was he, like the, the Green against... Bastard, Parts Unknown? Green Bastard, Parts Unknown. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not top-tier talent. But he did fight Hung Man Choi. This guy is like seven foot four and three hundred fifty pounds. Wow! And he's trying to fight Shaq, and Shaq keeps dodging him. So come on, Shaq. That's not a Big guy you fight. Swag. That's a guy you shoot. Just saying. Well, and he also fought Danny Bonaducci. Forget about <laughs> He, he said he felt bad when he knocked him out. He walked into a jab, and he's like under his breath, he's like, "You all right, man? You all right?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm okay." But the podcast hasn't been produced. There's only been three episodes put out, but. I listened to them all yesterday, um, and just like, if more people go listen to it, maybe he'll be driven to do another episode. Canseco knows. You know, and, you know, and people gave, you know, Canseco a lot of grief when he came up with that first book and made all those accusations. In retrospect, he was both accurate and, you know, he was, like, like you said, blunt, but he certainly didn't seem to be making stuff up in retrospect. No. No, I mean, uh, if, if you look at the guy... And then you see when he got together, he was like uh, rookie of the year in like 1987. That's right. mm-hmm. uh, so the year the tops of baseball cards all looked like wood. They were nasty. But uh, then he got on a team with Mark McGuire, who was a tall, skinny guy. And then a few years later, Mark McGuire is like a big, giant <laughs> he-hulk. Not she-hulk, but yeah. And then he sets the records. And, and he comes in, too. So, yeah, honest guy. And, hey. He he dated Madonna, and his life got wrecked temporarily. <laughs> Who else has dated Madonna and had their life wrecked? Oh, Alex Rodriguez, uh, Dennis Rodman. Vanilla Ice. So, um, Black story. Widow, I say. True story. Vanilla Ice, Madonna. Try scrubbing that no out kidding. of your brain, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy anyway. I love, love me some uh, I, I, You know what? I do have a podcast pick. I'm going to pick this week. I'm going to pick... All about Android. You're into Android, but you have to be really geeky into Android. It's not like iPad today where it's a quick, hey, here's some apps. It's really, they get into the nitty gritty of Android and Google and all that. They touch on all the stories. They do do some, they do do. They do some app picks at the end of the show. It's pretty good. All about Android on the Twitter network. I'll even play a short clip. No, I won't. (laughs) Oh, that was an accident. (laughs) Paul Paul said do do. I I said do do. This is Twit. There were some photos leaked of the Galaxy Folder. This is a flip phone. A flip phone! A flip phone that runs Android 4.2.2, sports two three seven-inch AMOLED touchscreen displays uh, with 800 by 480 resolution front and back, Snapdragon 400 dual-core processor, 2 gigabyte RAM, 4G LTE connectivity. Uh, 
this phone is never is probably according to rumors not going to get past korean borders in terms of global availability but still kind of amazing that somebody's making a a, a flip phone that samsung is still making a, a flip phone and i kind of like the name is folder it's kind I, of cute i have to say that if they release this in the united states i would predict that this would be a ridiculous success because nothing, everything else they they put released in the United States, they'll be like, nah, then that won't work. No, no, that'll work. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not saying anything about Samsung's previous releases, but I feel like there's an inherent desire to flip things in our society. And I think it all goes back to Star Trek and the communicators. Mm -hmm. Okay, and interesting. We've, and we've moved away from that with our smartphones. And I, th I actually thought about this the other night because I was on the bus coming back from the from uh, from the Upper Hate, and there was a dude who had a like an honest, a good like can like uh, candy clam bar, flip clamshell, oh. like fl yeah, clam flip phone. And I was like, I haven't seen one of those in years. <laughs> and he was really happy to be there doing his T9 thing. And imagine if he had the power of Android in one of these. I know, and we've seen these before, but I think if they brought it over here, it would do better than we expected, like the Note. We all laughed at the Note. We thought the Note was mm -hmm. going to be a joke. But seeing the form factor, I do like that anything but that candy bar form factor. Everything <laughs> looks the same at this point. Can't tell the difference between one phone or the next. Moto, Motorola trying to do everything different by adding little colors and everything. HTC trying to do different materials. No. But a, like a, an actual folding phone, I don't know if it's necessarily opening a device, but when you're angry and you want to hang up, yep. you know, this pushing is not the same. It doesn't. No, when you're just like, ah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm done with you. That, that satisfaction has been just, we're gone. We've been it's denied gone now. that. Yeah. Denied that for years now. I want to yeah. be able to hang a phone up. Right. All about Android. Check it out if you are an Android aficionado. Uh, go to twit.tv slash AAA, I think. If not, you'll find them at twit.tv. I watch a live show every Tuesday, just before NSFW with Brian Brushwood. Coffee's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. A little whiskey in there wouldn't be too bad either for a cold winter's night. Just saying. Or morning. Um... Paul, we're recording this in the beginning of August, just so the listeners know. Oh, right, know. right. Just so the listeners know. Gotcha. <laughs> Slight cold front. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll return next week, guys, with show notes and actual stories and whatnot. A quick episode to keep the folk, let the folks know that we're still here. You know, like, like Jimmy was talking about his podcast. We don't want people to look and say, well, they haven't done anything in six weeks. They're out of here. But uh, Professor Allen, congratulations. Uh, you're branching out. You're expanding your comic book pad, uh, podcast universe. Uh, I'm sure that we'll be seeing a lot more from you, and we'll be uh, promoting it on bookguys.ca. Folks, we're going to be returning all the news stories to bookguys.ca uh, within about a week. We're just ramping that up now, getting all the crack reporters out there. Well, they're not reporting about crack. They're book reporters, but they're, you know, you know what I mean. And this is about the time when I press this button here, I think. Am I good to go? Go. Same book time. Same book channel. Same book channel. We'll see you next week. Same book time. Same book channel. I'm having my coffee. Bye, everybody. <laughs> mm -mm, good. <laughs> Stay tuned, book readers and book listeners. Book Guide Show will return next week. Same book time. Same book channel. Superman dies?